Hi everyone, this is Chelsea. The topic of my PhD research is pulses. Okay, so that can't excite only me, right? There must be other folks out there who care about that as well. But since it's the topic of my PhD research, you can imagine that a question I get all the time is, well, what are pulses? So I thought I'd do a real quick video to just explain what they are. And hint, everything in this photo, these are all nine different types of pulse or pulses. So this figure is from a paper that one of my professors and I recently wrote earlier this year, in fact. So the main point of this figure is really to show the difference between legumes and different types of legumes. So we often use the word, well, I say we, but oftentimes people may use the word legume, pulse, and bean interchangeably, but the question is really, are they the same thing? And also, to be honest, a lot of people don't even use the word pulse. It kind of depends on where in the world you are and everything. Some countries use this term more often. But ultimately, what I want to explain here is that legumes, pulses, and dry beans are not the same thing, although they are related. So you can see here in this diagram that we're just looking at nine major legumes. There are other types of legumes, but want to break down some of the major ones for production and consumption worldwide. So if you're looking at these legumes, you can see that the first division is basically into non-oil seed legumes and oil seed legumes. So if you're gonna look at the oil seed legumes first, as you might guess from their name, oil seed, so they have a higher oil or fat content and they're lower in fiber when compared to their non-oil seed legume counterparts. So keep listening, right? Because this is how you're going to impress all your friends at dinner. You know that, right? Yes. So if again, looking at the oilseed legumes, peanut and soybean are kind of the two main example of oilseed legumes. And another reason that we might call them oilseed legumes is peanuts and soybeans are often used for oil. We extract oil and use that oil in cooking or processed food. Now looking over on the left at the non-oilseed legumes, we can see that these are lower in fat and they also are higher in fiber. So this is kind of the main division among legumes in the beginning. And then these non-oil seed legumes can be further broken down into, they can be called different things, but we'll say here undried legumes. And that's what people often think of as like a fresh green vegetable. So a snap bean, a snap pea, something like that. And then they can be broken down into Pulses. Okay, so there's that magical word. So pulses are, well, they actually have a very specific definition, but they are the dried, mature seeds of non-oilseed legumes. And that is a fun mouthful, right? But basically what that means is they're dried. So as opposed to the undried legumes, they're going to be dried, which makes them really great for storage, which has great implications for preventing food waste. They can last in your pantry a long time. It's good for food security. And then mature seeds, so the plant, it goes all the, way to, all the way to maturation. They dry in the field and then they're harvested. And as they are non-oil seed legumes, they have really low fat content and they're incredibly high in fiber. In fact, they're one of the richest natural sources of dietary fiber, period. And not only are they high in fiber, but they're also a very good source of protein. And what makes them really unique is they actually have about a one-to-one -one protein to dietary fiber ratio in them. That is very uncommon in foods. So if you look at a bag of dry pulses, or if you look at a can that you have, it can vary between different types, but you'll actually see that, yeah, they have about one-to-one -one of protein and fiber. So for example, maybe half a cup of cooked pulses contains seven grams of protein and seven grams of fiber, give or take. Okay, and then there are several types of pulses, but the five most common, again, by consumption and production are shown here. So chickpea, cow pea, which for most people we will think of as black-eyed peas, although technically there are also other types of cow peas. And then dry bean, so there's that bean, dry pea, and lentil. And dry bean, that's where all the beans like pinto bean, black bean, kidney bean, all those beans are falling in there. So you can see that, yeah, these are related, but legume, pulse, and bean are all a little bit different.
Okay, and oh, fun fact while we're here, let's say we're looking at pinto beans or whatever pulse you wanna look at, they're not all the same. So just cause you're buying pinto beans or something, there are different varieties of pinto beans, lots of different varieties that breeders grow and that farmers grow. And so, you know, even more excitement there, we can go address that later. But anyway, that's a brief summary. I hope you enjoyed it and have a lovely day. Thanks.